Um, I now please ask Sarah and Debbie to read us our scripture readings today. Um, I'll be reading from John chapter 8 verses 31 to 41. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room in, for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the father's presence and you are doing what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. This is the word of the Lord. And I'm reading 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 8. It says, Instructions on Worship. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Saviour, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to all at the proper time. And for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, and a true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. Therefore, I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. This is the word of the Lord. I'm sort of breaking away from the lectionary readings at this time. I felt this topic was relevant to bring, and uh, so I've acted in faith and trust uh, God uses it. Then the title of the message is called The Truth, The Whole Truth, and Nothing But the Truth. An issue our society is facing at the moment is being able to discern between what's truth and what's propaganda. Um, propaganda is defined as information, especially of a biased or misleading nature, used to promote a political cause or point of view, or spreading the spreading of ideas, information, or rumour for the purpose of helping and injuring an institution, a cause, or a person. Now, propaganda is something that every country and every institution has used to some degree or some time. And the crisis in Israel, uh, as in every war, uh, is a current example. What do you believe? Who do you believe? What's the truth? Um, one day Philip, uh, Jesus was teaching, and Philip asked Jesus, how can we know the way? How can we know what's true? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And Jesus said in our text, if you hold to my teachings, you are my disciples, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It's the truth that you know that sets you free. 
Not long before I became a Christian, I was deeply involved with spiritualism and the New Age movement. Um, but I was still unfulfilled. I felt like, although it was trendy with the people I was hanging out with, uh, I felt that it was lacking something. I felt unfulfilled. So I kept searching. I got involved with a group called the Theosophical Society, and they had a place uh, in North Perth, and they had a bookshop and groups during the week, and they talk about all religions and try to blend them together. But nothing gelled. It's interesting. It's a slight tired track, but I think it's relevant. I'd been reading the Bible, and I'd been sort of learning about Jesus. And here's this group where they're looking at what each religion can teach us. And I said, I, I remember reading somewhere where Jesus said, I can't remember the quote, but if people got really angry and reacted, and this guy said, oh, Jesus, who only wants to hear about Jesus? And that shocked me. Now, at this time, I wasn't a Christian, and I thought, we're here wanting to learn from every religion, but why do they get upset about Jesus? That actually uh, made me want to learn about Jesus more anyway. Because I'd made a, commit, a personal commitment to search for the truth, whatever the truth was, even if that truth turned out to be Christianity. And I shared that with some friends, close friends. And they said, okay, that's cool. Uh, if, you, if you're into Jesus, that's, that's okay. Just don't become one of these Jesus freaks or born-again Christians. My response was, but if that happens to be the truth, then I have to embrace it. Not long after that, I became a Christian, and I actually lost a lot of close friends. Because I could have been a Buddhist, Hare Krishna, uh, and they would have said, that's fine, but I became a Christian. Does truth matter today? The dominant philosophy up until recently was what some call postmodernism. Now, essentially, postmodernism declares that. Uh, the only objective truth is science, or the physical science is that which can be tested and proved or disproved. So if you've, you can do a, a, an experiment and test it and verify it, then, then it's, it's truth. Anything else is only a matter of opinion or belief. That one belief system is more true no more true than any other. So one of the phrases that you often get with postmodernism, it talks about your truth or my truth or that person, other person's truth, that it's true for them, but it isn't necessarily true for me. So they, uh, it's, well, I'll talk a bit more. It's a patronizing way of dealing with it. However, there's a developing trend today to even deny basic scientific truth. And unfortunately, the transgender movement is based on the assumption that perception is reality. Now, there's an element of truth in that. You know, a person's perception can shape their image of the world. But their One's perception doesn't make it real. It may be, but it isn't necessarily true. The problem with, I have with transgenderism, not the person, and I'm not talking about the individual, but this trend, is that if you disagree, you're just narrow-minded narrow bigot. And a lot of this in, is in defiance of biological science. So let me just tease that out a little bit about what I'm saying and what I'm not saying. If a person decides, if a man, for example, decides to dress like a woman, live like a woman, and 
uh, be a woman, then that's their choice. I might not like it, but that's their choice. When we st they start imposing on society that we have to uh, define them in that way, or they then access to uh, women's change rooms, toilets, etc., join women's sporting clubs, and have the right to do that, they're going beyond their truth to saying, you have to have, accept this as valid truth. So they're imposing their perception on others. The other thing that this step beyond postmodernism does, it claims there is no absolute truth. Uh, and I think they're including in that certain, a certain, some, some science. So they have, therefore, multiple genders. So gender is a, a social construct. I'm not sure the official definition, but um, it's, it's, it's about perception. So if your perception is that you're a born a male, perceive yourself to be a woman, that's your reality, or vice versa. So, but they're saying this perception is what everybody should recognize. Just going beyond that one, some seem to think that postmodernism affirms all religions, but in fact it's saying that when it comes to religion, you can believe what you like because none of it's true anyway. That's actually the, when they say all religions are the same, they're basically the same, there's the same because none of it's true. It's all, it, it's a, a secular humanism that pushes that. <coughs> By the way, it's illogical to say that all religions are true or that all religions are the same. And I hear Christians, some Christians have said that. That can't be. If you study various religions, you'll realize that some religions are diametrically opposed. They are not on about the same thing. Some people say, use the example, it's like God is the top of a mountain and all religions are just people trying to climb that mountain from different angles. That is, that is a false uh, image because not all religions acknowledge first that there's one God. Buddhism, for example, doesn't actually believe in God. So they're not all about the same thing. Logically, all religions can be wrong. I don't believe they are. But all religions can't be true. Okay? So, says postmodernism, it doesn't matter what you believe. It's nice and good to believe in something. I think it was G.K. Chesterton that said, when people stop believing in God, it's not that they believe in nothing, they will actually believe anything. And we're seeing that today. So this is secular materialism with a veneer of political correctness, a patronizing whitewash, a sugar coating that sounds nice on the surface but denies any validity of the spiritual. Now the common thread of all or most religions is the basic belief that there is a spiritual reality uh, the, that, and that the secular science and its methods can't contain or control or explain or test this alternative reality. They just don't have the tools or techniques to test it. So, they just dismiss it. If you can't test it, control it. Uh, and some, secular, some Christian scientists have tried to prove God through scientific means with varying degrees, and I'm not invalidating that, but science doesn't have the, the tools and the mechanisms to prove or disprove that. 
Uh, that's a, an open-ended question because some physicists are saying there is proof of God. So every society and tribe throughout history have had a belief in some, a divine being or some supernatural spiritual reality. So just because you can't prove something doesn't prove that it's not true. When people say, prove God to me, well, I have to say, I can't. But you can prove God for yourself. You can look for the evidence, and if you're sincere, you will find it. I think we have a scene here of uh, Pilate, Jesus before Pilate. I think we have that. I want us to just look at the scene and think about their conversation. So Jesus is before uh, Pilate, and Pilate says, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus, Is that your own idea? Jesus asked, Or do others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people, chief priests, handed you over to me. What is it that you have done? And Jesus says, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight and prevent me, my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, Pilate said. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. Uh, in fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Then Pilate asked, what is truth? Uh, it's interesting that uh, comment of Pilate, um, or comment of Jesus, uh, reminded me of that experience in the Theosophical Society when said, everyone on the side of truth listens to me, the people reacted to what Jesus taught. I could quote Buddha, Mohammed, and all the other religious teachers, and they thought, that's cool. But when I said Jesus, they reacted. Now, Pilate does what multitudes of educated people have done over the, over the ages. They make it an abstract issue a philosophical issue, which is basically a diversion, a deflection from facing the real issue. We can endlessly debate what is truth. And people do. When we ask what is the truth, then we're led to Jesus. That's what I was trying to find out. I wasn't, I could have just said in the Theosophical Society debate, what is true? What's true of each religion? And there's elements of each religion that are, have an element of truth. But when I asked, what's the truth? Which is the right way? What is the source of salvation? Then in my own study and spiritual journey I was led to Jesus the truth can be verified for yourself if you really want to know the truth remember Jesus said if you hold to my teaching you are really my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free most people claim that they want to hear the truth and I wonder if they, they're open to know the truth that has set them free. And I always remember the scene from a, a few good men. Well, uh, uh, Jack Nicholson's on trial and uh, well, that young guy says, just tell me the truth. And Nick, Jack Nicholson says, you can't handle the truth. That is so true. Can people really handle the truth? Truthfulness and honesty was once one of our society's highest values. But it seems that a higher value is in today's society 
It's about not offending or upsetting anyone. A shying away from the truth, and I'm not just talking about religious truth, just by saying to a person, and you can, some places you can actually get arrested and jailed for saying to a trans person, transgender person, you are not a man, you are, a, you are not a woman, you are a man who acts like a woman. If you say that in public in front, in some places you can be arrested because you're offending them. Isn't that crazy? Are people so fragile they can't hear things? Because the truth will confront people. Part of understanding pe people understanding the truth of the gospel is accepting the truth that we are all sinners, alienated, separated from God, that all our good deeds and good characteristics cannot undo or cancel the reality of sin. I've used in the past the example of a person getting AIDS. Now, I'm not saying AIDS is equals sin. It's an illustration. When a person gets the AIDS virus, and I'm not sure if medicine has been able to fix it, but, uh, and they can get it quite innocently. People are born with AIDS. Um, um, now, no matter how good a life they live, no matter how a healthy life they live, nothing they do can compensate for the fact that they have this deadly disease. It's the same with sin. With sin in our life, we face the consequences. We can live a very religious life, but until the sin is dealt with, uh, we, we, face, we face death. Declaring the whole truth about Christianity is risk, at the risk of offending people to confront them of their sin and their need for salvation. Just asking somebody, are you saved? Some people used to look at me puzzled and say, I don't know what you mean. Now they get offended. Um, we can play with alternative words and phrases to convey that truth, but we cannot change or deny that truth. People will, will be confronted with the truth that without, their go without God, their lives are incomplete. In John 5:12, uh, it's they put it this way: Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. And Timothy says, "This is good and pleases our God, God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth." For as one God and mediator between God and mankind, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. And this is now being witnessed to at the proper time. Uh, and, for, and for this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I'm telling the truth. I'm not lying. A true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. Now, to be sure, the truth needs to be presented and proclaimed and preached, communicated in a spirit of love and understanding and respect. So we need to speak the truth, and as Job Paul says, to speak the truth in love. But our mission is not, is not simply to hit people with the truth, but to communicate the truth so that they will hear, understand, and receive what God has to offer them. Something I've learned over the years, and it doesn't just apply in a spiritual sense, but even psychologically, that the truth hurts. Hearing the truth can hurt, but it only hurts once when you hear it and embrace it. Now, I had an illustration plan, but I'm going to use a different one. Imagine I had a special mirror that I could put up. I think I might have used this illustration before. This mirror, in any mirror, when you look at it, you see a reflection, your physical reflection. Imagine I had a mirror 
that doesn't just reflect that, but reflects how God sees you. Maybe how others see you. So when you look at it, you don't just see your physical things, but it sees your full character, your flaws, your mistakes, those secret things. This is in psychology, there's a little diagram called the Joe Harry window that fills that out. But when you look at it, you see how God sees you. I remember using this illustration in Geraldton many years ago, and I said, imagine coming to God and just saying, God, you can tell me whatever you want to tell me, and I will hear it. This young man came to the front, and he was sobbing, sobbing, and sobbing. And I thought, oh, crikey, what, what's happening here? And I just imagined that God had told him some unpleasant truth. That this young man was prepared to hear that. So after a while I was with him and prayed and I said, what did God say? You know what he said? He just said, Timothy, that was his name, I know you, but I love you. That's all he said. And that, that just broke him. Facing and enduring the pain of the truth of Jesus will bring freedom, but it may cause some pain to start off with makes us face some unpleasant realities. Just as Jesus couldn't be resurrected without the crucifixion, Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. How valuable is freedom to you? How valuable is truth to you? The truth may not hurt, but it might. But without the truth, we ultimately lose. Remember Jesus on trial and f um, before Pilate, and basically, Jesus is basically saying, Pilate, I actually don't have to prove anything to you. The truth will prevail. Pilate, you will know the truth eventually, and it will either free you or destroy you. Demanding on how depending on how you respond to it. Remember Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now we can dismiss all this, this statement as Christian propaganda. But if it's the truth, we can't dismiss it's the consequences. Let's pray. Lord, as we come before you again, we just ask, Lord, show us the truth. We know, Lord, that you are the truth, the truth of who you are, why you died, the truth of ourselves. But Lord, we ask that you reveal more of who we are, what you, what you want us to, to change, what you want us to confront, what you want us to do. Lord, Unpack that and bring to the surface of our consciousness those things that you want us to affirm or things you want us to change. So, Lord, help us to know the truth that brings us freedom. In Jesus' name, amen.